This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1151. Exercise Strategies for Rapid Fat Loss, part one, by Sirdar Tunjala of nerdgettingfit.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Happy Monday and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. And we have five shows narrating blogs. Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find all of them. Now, today's post is a bit longer than what I typically narrate. So I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. But for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Exercise Strategies for Rapid Fat Loss, Part 1, by Sirdar Tunjala of nerdgettingfit.com. Do you have to exercise for fat loss? Not necessarily, but it certainly helps. You have to be careful though. Approaching exercise for fat loss haphazardly might hinder your results in the long term. When it comes to fat loss, one of the most confusing parts of exercise science, you get conflicting recommendations and you don't know which one to follow. In this post, I'm going to try to clarify this and give you actual exercise strategies for fat loss. Why do we exercise? What is the point of exercising in the first place? you need to design your exercise routine based on your goals. For example, if your goal is to increase your lung capacity and aerobic threshold, high-intensity interval training is your best option. On the other hand, if you're trying to improve your stamina, long, steady-state cardio will work better. If you want to get stronger, lifting heavy weights in the lower rep range is the way to go. As you can see, different exercise methods work better for different goals. In this post, My recommendations will focus on exercise for rapid fat loss. How fat loss works. Fat on your body is the reserve energy source. The only way to reduce your fat mass is to create a need for this reserve energy source. If you are already giving your body the energy it needs, there is no reason to tap into the fat for energy. So we need to burn more energy than we take in to burn fat. There are four ways we burn energy. 1. Basal metabolic rate. This is the amount of energy we burn at rest. The basal metabolic rate is pretty much set for everyone, and there's very little we can do to change this. The basal metabolic rate is regulated by our age, sex, body weight, and fat-free mass. The best thing we can do to keep our basal metabolic rate high is to have as much fat-free mass as possible. 2. The thermic effect of food. When we digest food, it costs our bodies to digest the food. We burn extra calories through heat after we eat. Every macronutrient has a different thermic effect, protein being the highest. 20 to 30% of the calories you eat from protein are burned through heat. This number is around 5 to 10% for carbohydrates and 0 to 5% for fats. 3. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you move. Get out of bed, take a shower, walk to your car, climb the stairs, talk to your friends, fidget, dance, etc. We burn calories with all of this activity, even though we are not exercising. The amount of calories we burn through NEAT varies a lot from person to person. Genetics, hormones, and daily habits affect how many calories we burn throughout the day. The most significant difference between naturally overweight people and naturally lean people is the number of calories they burn through NEAT. The difference can be thousands of calories a day. The best thing we can do to increase NEAT calories is to take every opportunity to move more during the day. Four, exercise. The last way we burn calories is exercise. Whether it is cardio, strength training, or circuit training, we burn calories during exercise. However, the amount of calories we burn during exercise is usually overestimated by those calorie readouts on cardio machines or by the activity trackers we wear. I'll give you an example. Julia Belus spent 90 minutes exercising on a bike at the National Institutes of Health, who accurately measured the amount of calories she burned during this 90-minute session. It was determined that she only burned 405 calories throughout those 90 minutes. Since fat loss is about creating a calorie deficit, is exercise essential? 
can't we just eat less and follow a sedentary lifestyle? Technically, you can't, but studies show that creating a calorie deficit with both diet and exercise helps us avoid adaptive thermogenesis when compared to dieting alone. By exercising, you maintain your metabolism, and in this way, you can burn fat more efficiently. How not to exercise to lose fat. When your goal is fat loss, all your instincts are going to tell you to exercise as much as humanly possible. Morning fasted cardio, a spin class during your lunch break, strength training in the afternoon, and maybe another evening run. You sure are going to burn a lot of calories like this, but unless you are used to this kind of training routine, you are going to crash fast. From an evolutionary perspective, losing weight is a horrible idea. It is the equivalent of throwing money out the window. Therefore, our bodies resist this instinct as much as they can. When you burn more calories and or eat less, your body is going to do all it can to compensate for the lost calories. After a prolonged exercise session, your body will try to get those calories back by increasing your appetite. If you don't cave in and eat, the body may compensate by restricting your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, meaning you'll fidget less throughout the rest of the day. Maybe you went on a long run early in the morning and burned a few hundred calories. Unless you are accustomed to this type of training, you will feel tired for the rest of the day. Maybe you will take a nap instead of cleaning the house. Or perhaps you will stay at home and watch TV instead of going shopping with your friends. You have every right to feel good about the calories you burn during training, but it doesn't help your fat loss goals if you compensate for those calories by either eating more or moving less for the rest of the day. How to exercise to lose fat. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Exercise Strategies for Rapid Fat Loss by Sirdar Tunjala of nerdgettingfit.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Isn't it such great news that the body loves to hold on to fat? Can you sense the sarcasm in my voice? we have to face the fact that our bodies are built to survive. And part of that survival mechanism is to hold on to body fat. Our ancestors didn't have a Taco Bell or McDonald's nearby that was open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So they often didn't know when their next meal was gonna happen. So they might've gone long periods without eating a balanced meal. How do we survive such long periods of famine? By holding on to our body fat. Body fat is a highly concentrated source of energy. We have stored sugar in the body too. When we use that stored sugar for energy, it only gives us about four calories per gram worth of energy. On top of that, we don't have very much of this sugar stored up. Fat, on the other hand, provides much more energy, about nine calories per gram, more than twice the amount of energy that sugar provides. And some researchers believe that there is no limit to how much fat we can store in our bodies. So, as Sardar mentioned, It's like our bodies were built to hold on to fat for dear life. But luckily, scientists have studied why some people burn more fat all the time and others don't. The good news is, you do have some control over whether this happens to you. Want to know what that is? Well, you'll have to come back and listen tomorrow. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening every day. And I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.